May I first introduce the co-moderators for today's section. My name is Sitchoi Jadi Margaret. I am Associate Professor at the Rural Revitalization Strategic Research Institute, Southwest University in mainland China. I am board member of Asian Regional Exchange for New Alternatives and a founding member of Global University for Sustainability. I have been involved in the rural reconstruction movement in China for over two decades. John Restakis has been active in the co-op movement for 25 years. He is the former executive director of Community Evolution Foundation and the British Columbia Cooperative Association. John is also the co-founder of Synergy Cooperatives Institute, a practitioner and pioneering researcher into international cooperative economies. He writes and lectures on economic democracy and the role of cooperatives in humanizing economies. In 2018, John visited uh, Rojava and highlights the case of stateless democracy in Rojava in his book, Civilizing the State, Reclaiming Politics for the Common Good. John is the author of Humanizing the Economy, Cooperatives in the Age of Capital, and lives in, and lives in Vancouver, British Columbia. We firstly met John at the fifth Social Forum on Sustainability in 2018. He delivered some lectures on cooperatives in different areas. He gave a special presentation on Rojava Revolution. We produced both English and traditional Chinese versions of the recordings. I typed the video uh, links in the chat room for your reference. Now I pass the floor to John. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Jade. Uh, it's uh, a real honor and, and a privilege to uh, to be invited to um, help to coordinate and moderate uh, this webinar. Um, I've had a deep uh, interest in um, Rojava for uh, a number of years now, and had uh, the honor of uh, participating in a uh, uh, a tour of Rojava. I guess in 2015, I think it was. It seems uh, so long ago now or 2016, perhaps. In any event, um, I will um, introduce my uh, our two uh, collaborators and, and, and co-panelists. Um, my good friend, uh, Lehman Hassano, um, is a member of the Civil Diplomacy Center in North and Eastern Syria. Uh, she is a former vice president of the Economic Development, uh, Economic Department in Al Jazeera region. Uh, in the Autonomous Administration of North and East Syria. And she has a degree in economics from uh, Damascus University in 2018. And Leman and I have been uh, in communication and collaborating on a number of uh, projects uh, since my visit to uh, Rojava. And I am very happy that she can join us here today. Welcome, uh, Leman. Um, and we are also joined by Dr. Mohammed Hassan, uh, who is a member of the Administrative Committee of the Department of Foreign Affairs in the Autonomous Administration of North and East Syria. Uh, he has a doctorate degree in uh, education, uh, specialized in uh, syllabuses and teaching methods from Damascus University in uh, 2009. Um, the way we are going to um, uh, organize um, this uh, session is um, I will be just providing uh, some background uh, context and basic information for those of our participants that may not be familiar with um, the history of uh, the revolution in northern and eastern Syria. Uh, and I will take perhaps five to 10 minutes just to give a, a framework for the discussion that will follow. Uh, and then our two uh, co-panelists will contribute um, some reflections uh, in much more detail, both on the governance system and the philosophy of direct democracy uh, and democratic confederalism in um, uh, the autonomous uh, administration of Northern East Syria and also uh, providing some reflection on the current situation uh, in Northern and Eastern Syria, 
uh, how the um, international political dynamics, particularly uh, the war in Ukraine and the, the roles of both Russia and Turkey are affecting uh, the evolution of democratic confederalism uh, in that region. Uh, and so I will leave it to them to, to provide uh, a much more um, detailed uh, uh, perspective on, on those questions. Um, but uh, for me, I just want to give um, some basic uh, background and I'll be sharing um, uh, some portions of my presentation uh, on, on screen so you can follow some of it. But uh, to begin with, uh, historically, uh, Rojava constitutes the western part uh, of a region uh, in northern and eastern Syria, uh, which is, uh, has been continuously inhabited by the Kurdish people for some 8,000 years. Now, uh, this region, uh, traditionally known as Kurdistan, stretches across Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Uh, there's a population of this region of about 40 million people. Uh, which makes the Kurds uh, the world's largest uh, ethnic group without a state. Uh, throughout uh, their history, uh, the Kurdish people have never accepted a form of centralized political control, either from either Kurds or from other regional powers. Uh, Kurdish uh, villages were governed uh, by tribal chieftains uh, and village elders. And as you may see in the course of our presentation, much of this localized communitarian direct democracy has been preserved uh, in the political form of stateless democracy and democratic confederalism. At the end of World War I, uh, the Kurds were promised a state of their own by the Ottoman authorities. Uh, this promise was violated uh, by Turkey when the region's boundaries were drawn following uh, the Paris Peace Conference. In 1978, uh, the PKK was established, the Kurdish Workers' Party uh, was established in Turkey, and in 2003, uh, the PYD was formed in Syria. And here, I'll just see if I can get a, a share of my screen. Can everybody see that okay? Yes, yes. Okay, so what we have, what we have here then is a map uh, of the region. Uh, you can see Syria at the center, uh, uh, Rojava, or currently the Autonomous Administration of Northern and Eastern uh, Syria is in the yellow region to the uh, top for, uh, uh, northeast corner of Syria, bounded by Turkey to the north and Iraq to the uh, west uh, and south. Uh, the region um, is uh, uh, what you might sort of expect from being in this part of the world. Uh, and much of this uh, territory uh, that had been captured by the Islamic State uh, during their incursion into Northeast Syria um, uh, shortly after 2011 uh, has been recovered um, by the forces of the uh, uh, SDF uh, in uh, Northeast Syria. So um, uh, to talk a little bit about some of the internal dynamics of, of this region, uh, Rojava has been exploited as an internal colony by the Assad regime and the uh, Arab elites in Damascus uh, for decades. Uh, the Syrian conflict itself uh, broke out in March of 2011 uh, when schoolboys uh, were arrested and tortured for writing anti-Assad graffiti uh, in their school. Uh, and what began as a peaceful uh, pro-democracy uh, movement uh, in the region uh, was uh, quickly uh, uh, violently suppressed uh, by uh, the Assad regime, um, and which led then to a uh, widening of the conflict of an armed conflict in the region. Uh, and the conflict in turn um, opened the door for a resurgence of Kurdish efforts to establish uh, a homeland. Today, uh, Syria has become a battlefield for a proxy war uh, among diverse interests uh, in the area and also internationally, the United States, Russia, Turkey. Uh, the Gulf states are also deeply involved as is Iran uh, and the so-called terrorists are mostly militias funded and supported by the neighboring states, including Turkey. So the, um, the militias that are participating 
in much of these sort of terrorist, terrorist activity in the region have in large measure been uh, funded uh, and, and, and supported by uh, external uh, uh, interests, uh, including uh, Turkey, Iran, and the Gulf autocracies uh, of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and so on. Um, just a couple of words on the uh, political system uh, in in uh, in uh, ANES. Uh, Rojava's political economy is based on the principle of direct democracy as the organizing basis for both economics and politics, and this is the foundation stone for the political system in the region. Uh, and the foundation for this is communal control of both economic and political life. Uh, Rojava is a powerful instance, an example of community-directed uh, democracy as the link between the organization of the economy and the organization of political life as an integrated system. Um, I'll just skip that and uh, move on to sort of uh, some of the longer range uh, dynamics uh, 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 that have been a key focal point for this system. A key issue from the start was how to organize and create a community movement uh, and how the Kurdish community oppressed for so many years uh, could address these problems. Uh, sooner or later, the conflict uh, would end. Uh, and the question uh, in the meanwhile has very much been how to create a lasting community that can pre preserve these values and these principles for the Kurdish people. So um, uh, democratic confederalism, uh, as it is called in Rojava, uh, is a form of communitarian uh, anarchism or libertarian socialism. Uh, in simple terms, its principles are anti-state, anti-hierarchy, and anti-private property. Uh, to obtain these objectives, self-managed uh, uh, communitarian direct democracy and communal property are essential. Uh, cooperatives uh, and self-directed community councils are a means of uh, managing the system. They are the foundation of the system and the form of direct democracy in the economy is uh, what I call uh, cooperative commonwealth. Uh, and the form of direct democracy in politics is a democratic confederalism. So what does this entail? Uh, democratic self-governance entails one, uh, a rejection of the nation state, as inherently oppressive, uh, direct democracy based on communal councils at a local level, federated and autonomous self-governing uh, territories, uh, the inclusivity of all religious and ethnic groups. So it's a pluralistic democratic communitarian system, gender equality, cooperative economics, participatory politics, and crucially uh, environmentalism. I will uh, end on these uh, last few slides just to give you a uh, kind of a, a graphic uh, depiction of the council system, which is really kind of the bedrock and the uh, the architecture of the uh, governance system in the autonomous administration of northern and eastern Syria. Uh, at the basic level, at the communal level, what you have is the commune, which is composed of local uh, 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 councils of, of neighborhoods uh, within uh, the territory. And each of these communes are then subdivided into a variety of uh, committees, which are responsible for the administration of uh, various um, uh, issue areas, like, uh, like youth, uh, like um, women's issues, like defense, uh, like local economic uh, development, health, uh, and so on. Uh, in turn, uh, these communes are, if I can get this down here, in turn, uh, these uh, communes uh, form the foundation for uh, neighborhood councils, uh, which are composed of representatives from each of the local communes, uh, which are then a deliberative body representing uh, the local uh, commune in the, uh, uh, the deliberations of a neighborhood council. And in turn, the neighborhood uh, councils uh, send representations to the regional uh, or their, the county councils, uh, which form uh, one of the toppermost uh, tiers of this representative system. Uh, and finally, uh, what you have is the different uh, regions or the cantons, 
uh, uh, the Federal Assembly of the Syrian Democratic Council, um, which federates uh, the various um, uh, regions to address uh, questions of cross-regional and, and uh, broader um, uh, regional uh, issues like the, the economy, like the organization of agriculture, like the management uh, of natural resources, and of political functions like representation on issues regarding foreign affairs. So this is uh, 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 an integrated and nested uh, direct democracy system based on local uh, community councils uh, and sending representation all the way up to the canton level. So it's an integrated uh, approach. Uh, it's territorial. It's community de uh, development. It's cooperative in terms of economic democracy. And it is communal direct democracy in terms of democratic self-government. All three uh, systems are integrated within a single comprehensive vision of systemic change. And the model here is civil organizations directing development. Uh, there are a number of very influential, uh, highly sort of articulated uh, civil groups like TEPDEM, uh, like uh, the Women's Organization, Congress Star, which are active in mobilizing, and organizing uh, direct democratic participation in the communist and then all the way up through the, um, the council system. I will close on this. Um, uh, one of the main uh, issues confronting uh, the uh, survival of the uh, democratic confederalism in the region is the uh, aggression and hostility of Turkey. Uh, in 2019, October 9th, uh, 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 Turkey invaded Northeast Syria with the tacit support of Donald Trump. Uh, the result of that has been uh, ethnic cleansing uh, with the displacement of some 300,000 people from the region. Uh, the situation now uh, is at a stalemate uh, with the Assad regime holding power in the southwest portion of Syria with the backing, crucially, of Russian forces. So negotiations between Assad's regime and the ANS have stalled. Prolonged militarization is also undermining uh, civil development, as is the case with any prolonged military um, uh, 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 situation in a region that's trying to establish a, a, a communitarian and a democratic political uh, system. So um, the um, this is a map of uh, of the region once again. The areas uh, that you'll notice on the top uh, are where uh, Turkey has uh, established uh, militarized zones uh, in the north uh, of the borderland between uh, Turkey and, uh, and, and Rojava. Uh, and the question now is what will happen next? Uh, and uh, what seems to be a clear intent on the part of Erdogan in uh, Turkey to continue his uh, incursion into North and East Syria and to continue his, uh, uh, his war against democratic confederalism in the region. So I am going to leave it at that. Uh, and I will now uh, pass it on to Dr. Mohammed. Uh, welcome. Um, I, I hope I didn't take too much time providing that background. And I hope that the background was relatively accurate. It's been a while since I've been in the region, um, but I will I will pass it over to you. And and uh, and uh, we all are very anxious to hear your reflections on these issues. Uh, well, first I would like uh, to thank the Global University for Sustainability, and uh, you, Mr. Uh, Restakis, for for giving us this opportunity to discuss. Uh, this important topic and to shed light on the situation in North and East Syria. Uh, I would like first to give a brief historical background starting with 20, uh, 2011, uh, the date when the uh, Syrian people started demonstrating against the Syrian regime asking for freedom and reform. Uh, the Kurds joined the pro-reform and anti-regime demonstrations that had erupted in Syria in mid-March 2011, demanding for freedom and Kurdish rights. Uh, between 2011 and 2012, uh, the People's Protection Units 
the YPG and the Women's Protection Units, the YPJs, were established as self-defense forces to defend the Kurdish regions of Rojava from any possible threat. On the 19th of July, 2012, the Kurds expelled uh, the Syrian regime's army and administration from the three main uh, cantons of Rojava, uh, uh, Jazeera, Kobani, and Afrin, and started to organize themselves through communes and councils. In January 2014, uh, the Democratic Autonomous Administrations of the three Kurdish cantons of Afrin, Kobani, and Jazeera were declared. Uh, in September 2014, the Islamic State's ISIS attacked Kobani, and after months of heroic resistance, the Kurdish forces, represented by the YPG and YPJ, uh, managed to liberate Kobani. During the Battle of, of Kobani, uh, the US-led global coalition against ISIS uh, started its partnership with the Kurdish forces uh, providing air power support for the Kurdish fighters who were fighting uh, ISIS on the ground. The victory of Kobani was a turning point in the war against ISIS and drew the attention, uh, drew the attention of the media to Rojava and the struggle of the Kurds. On the 10th of October 2015, the uh, Syrian Democratic Forces, SDF, was created. Uh, so from 2012 to 2015, the Kurdish majority forces of YPG and YPJ fought against terrorist and radical Islamist groups such as ISIS and Nusra Front, which is an offshoot of Al-Qaeda organization of course, both ISIS and uh, the uh, Nusra Front are classified as terrorist organizations. Uh, the YPG and YPJ fought during uh, uh, this period between 2012 and 2015 uh, in order to uh, defend the Kurdish regions of uh, Rojava. But after the liberation of uh, uh, Kobani, the Kurdish forces decided to continue the fight against ISIS uh, in partnership with the global uh, coalition uh, to liberate regions outside the traditional homeland of the Kurds. With this decision, a large number of Arab recruits began to join uh, the Kurds uh, to liberate their regions from ISIS. Uh, therefore, uh, the YPG, YPJ, and other military groups uh, decided to form the Syrian Democratic Forces, the SDF, to become a multi-ethnic and multi-religious military organization that includes units uh, from the Arab, Kurdish, Christian, and other populations. On the 16th of March, 2016, representatives of the diverse ethnic and religious groups uh, in Nes, in north and east of Syria, held a meeting and proclaimed the Democratic Federation of North Syria. Uh, the reason why Rojava was replaced by North Syria is that Rojava is a Kurdish word which refers to West Kurdistan, uh, and includes the predominantly Kurdish regions of Jazeera, Afrin, and Kobani. With the liberation of uh, more predominantly Arab territories from ISIS, uh, and the desire of the people in the liberated regions to join the autonomous regions of Rojava, a decision was taken to drop the term Rojava uh, to make the project more inclusive. And actually, this uh, decision was in line with the ideological framework of the Democratic Nation Project, which implies that the will of the diverse ethnic and religious groups uh, and cultural groups must be respected. Uh, on the 24th of August 2016, uh, the Turkish army conducted uh, the first operation in North Syria called Operation Euphrates Shield, which 
led to the occupation of large swathes of Syrian lands. The aim of this operation was not to fight ISIS as Turkey claimed, but to prevent the Syrian Democratic Forces, the SDF, from uniting the Kurdish cantons and to thwart the Democratic Federation uh, project. Uh, on the 6th of September 2018, the Autonomous Administration of North and East of Syria, uh, known shortly as the ANES, was established to coordinate the services and unify the laws in the seven regional administrations of Jazeera, Afrin, Kobani, Mandej, Tabka, Raqqa, and Derizo. So the regions of the AANES, of the Autonomous Administration of North and East of Syria, include the three Kurdish regions of Jazeera, Kobani, and Afrin, as well as uh, four Arab majority regions, namely Manbij, Tabka, Raqqa, and Derizor, which were liberated from ISIS by the SDF. Uh, on the 20th of January, 2018, Turkey started another cross-border military operation, which led to the occupation of Afrin, uh, one of the three major Kurdish regions of Rojava. Many human rights organizations, uh, including the UN report on Syria, have documented many violations and the crimes committed by the Turkish-backed radical Islamist groups against the people of Afrin. The crimes that were documented include torture, rape, kidnapping for ransom, demographic engineering, and others. Kurds in Afrin before the occupation formed more than 95% uh, of the population. Due to the process of forcible displacement of Kurds, and resettling Arab families in their homes, the percentage of Kurds dropped to less than 25% now. On the 23rd of March uh, 2019, the Syrian Democratic Forces declared military victory uh, over ISIS in Derzo. On the 10th of October 2019, Turkey conducted another military operation and occupied uh, Sarikani and Talabyak. The Turkish stated objective was to create a safe zone to protect its national security. Although the SDF has never posed any threat to the Turkish uh, national uh, security and have not uh, conducted any uh, attack from Northeast, uh, from Northeast Syria, uh, against the Turkish territories. Uh, today, today on July, on July 25, uh, 2022, uh, Turkey is threatening to invade Tarifat and Membij, the two ANS regions located west Euphrates. And the pretext is, as usual, uh, protecting its national security by creating a safe zone along the border and inside uh, north and east of Syria. From this brief historical background, we can uh, see that Turkey is the most hostile and aggressive neighbor of north and east of Syria. So the question that should be posed is, why does Turkey hold such an aggressive uh, attitude towards north and east of Syria? Uh, the Kurdish homeland, Kurdistan, is divided between four countries, Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Syria. The Kurdish population uh, in Turkey accounts for 30% of the general population, that is around 25 million. Uh, since the establishment of the Turkish state uh, in 1923, the Kurds have been oppressed and denied their basic cultural and political rights. Uh, even the Kurdish language was banned in public places. As a result, the Kurds revolted 
against the oppressive Turkish governments demanding equality and recognition for their rights in the constitution. The last revolution uh, started in 1978 by the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, and led by the Kurdish leader, Abdullah Ocalan. In 1984, the PKK decla declared armed struggle against the Turkish state under uh, national, the national slogan to liberate the four parts of Kurdistan. After more than a decade of the armed struggle against the Turkish state, Turkey was able to uh, persuade some countries such as the US and some uh, members of the European Union to list the PKK as a terrorist organization. It is important to mention here that this classification was based on political agreements and not on legal grounds. And in 1999, Abdullah Ocalan was kidnapped and handed over to Turkey. He was kidnapped in Kenya uh, and handed over to Turkey. Between 1999 and 2004, the PKK made a significant ideological transformation and adopted Ocalan's ideas on the democratic nation paradigm and democratic confederalism as a non-state political administration. With the outset of the Rojava revolution, the representatives of the Kurdish, Arab, Syriac, Christians, political parties and organizations began to organize the society according to a bottom-up political administrative system inspired by the ideas of the Kurdish leader, Abdullah Ocalan of direct uh, democracy, and democratic confederal system where all the people, regardless of their ethnic and religious background, enjoy equal rights. Turkey sees this inclusive and democratic project as a threat to its ethnocentric nationalistic political system and fears that the success of this model of governance as a solution for the Kurdish issue in Syria could also become a model uh, of solution for the Kurdish issue in Turkey. This is why Turkey has sought to undermine this project by supporting radical Islamist groups to attack Ness and by directly conducting uh, three, offensive, uh, three offensives against uh, north and east of Syria. To fulfill its expansionist agenda in our region, Turkey has always used the PKK as a pretext to attack Ness by claiming that our military and political organizations are affiliated with uh, the PKK. <coughs> In reality, we do not have any military coordination or any organizational link with the PKK. We only share the same political and philosophical ideology proposed by the Kurdish leader, Abdullah Ocalan. We as Syrian Kurds and other communities living in North and East of Syria have a Syrian project, which is to build a democratic, inclusive and decentralized political system based on gender equality and environmental sustainability. We have never launched any attack from Northeast Syria against Turkey. So instead of focusing on solving its own problems with its curves, Turkey has always tried to export its own internal unresolved conflicts to its neighboring countries uh, such as Syria and Iraq. <clears throat> uh, today, uh, the war in, in, in Ukraine has provided Turkey with another opportunity to blackmail Europe and NATO. Turkey's geostrategic position makes it an important ally for NATO to counter Russia. This is why Erdogan is trying to benefit from the war in Ukraine to get more concessions from Europe and NATO in many fights. 
For example, when Sweden and Finland announced in May that they would seek NATO membership in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Erdogan threatened to oppose Sweden's and Finland's NATO membership unless they abandoned their support for Kurdish forces. And he succeeded in pressuring Finland <coughs> and Sweden to uh, sign a trilateral agreement in which the two Nordic countries agreed to limit the activities of the Kurdish political organization in both countries. Meanwhile, Erdogan has vowed to launch a new military incursion into Syria, an attack that would target the ANS and the SDF. He's acting actually at the moment when the US and other Western nations need Turkey and might be less inclined <coughs> to attack, uh, to oppose uh, such an incursion. But what would be the consequences of any Turkish aggression on Northeast Syria? Northeast Syria is inhabited by around 5 million people. Any attack would lead to a humanitarian catastrophe and another huge wave of refugees towards Europe. It would threaten the existence of the indigenous people of the region, especially the Kurds, the Christians, and the Yazidis, because the Turkish intention to create its so-called safe zone involves resettling 3 million of Syrian refugees in this zone. So the real aim of Turkey's so-called safe zone is to change the demography of the Kurdish regions, as it did in Afrin and in Serikan. The two, of course, Kurdish regions which were occupied and controlled by Turkey and its radical Islamist groups. The Turkish invasion would also threaten the, reg the regional and international peace and security uh, through reactivating terrorist groups, especially ISIS. As a result of the war on terror launched by the SDF in coordination with the global uh, coalition uh, against ISIS, we have now more than 10,000 local and foreign ISIS fighters in the prisons of the ANS, of the Autonomous Administration. There are also thousands of ISIS families in Roj and Al Hol camps. So, any attack on our region would create a security vacuum and would allow ISIS, ISIS fighters and their families, uh, to flee and to reorganize themselves again, which will pose a serious threat not only to our region, but also to the, to the whole world. Uh, the SDF has lost more than 20,000, more than 12,000 of its fighters to liberate the regions of the autonomous administration from ISIS and rid the world from the evil of, of ISIS. So any new Turkish offensive would undermine the international effort and campaign to combat terrorism. Now, finally, I would like to uh, uh, mention uh, like why it is important to protect this project, the Autonomous Administration Project, and recognize it as a model for solving the Syrian crisis. There are three projects in, in Syria the Arab nationalist project led by the central government in Damascus, the political Islam project represented by the various Islamist organizations such as the Muslim Brotherhood and other extremist groups, which are backed by the Turkish government, and the ANS project, which is based on the democratic nation principles. The Syrian government, and the Turkish-backed Islamist groups are both exclusionary and insist on giving Syria a purely Arab and Islamic character, although Syria is a multi-ethnic and multi-religious country. The 12 years of civil war in Syria, which caused hundreds of 
thousands of deaths, millions of Syrian refugees around the world, and the huge destruction of infrastructure is an indication that the nationalist and theocratic political systems are unable to be the answer when discussing the future of Syria. The ANS project, on the other hand, which is based on a set of core principles that organizes its work to ensure that every ethnic or religious group can freely practice its culture and, lag and language. For example, in the ANS regions, there are three official languages, Kurdish, Arabic, and Aramaic. It ensures women's rights in society by applying the principle of equal gender representation in all the councils and administrative positions. In addition to implementing the co chaining system, which gives men and women equal decision-making responsibility, it provides one of the best conditions for religious freedom in the Middle East by creating an atmosphere of tolerance and peaceful coexistence among all religious communities. And in fact, if we have a look at the UN Security Council Resolution 2254, it states clearly <coughs> that the only sustainable solution to the crisis in Syria is a, through an inclusive Syrian-led and Syrian-owned political process that meets the legitimate aspiration of the Syrian people. It adheres to Syria's unity, territorial integrity, and non-sectarian character. It encourages the meaningful participation of women in the political process for Syria. And we believe that the ANES project is the only region in Syria that meets the UN criteria and the principles for solving the Syrian crisis. This is why we believe that it is important to recognize the ANES as a model for solving the Syrian crisis and to include the representatives of the ANES in all international platforms that discuss the future of Syria so that we are able to build a democratic, pluralistic, and decentralized Syria where all people, regardless to their ethnicities uh, or religions, can enjoy freedom and equal rights. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hassan. Um, uh, a lot of information and background there. I'm sure it'll generate a lot of questions and, and discussion uh, following. So let me turn uh, the uh, microphone over to Lehman and uh, please uh, proceed, Lehman. I think you're going to be talking a bit more about the council system and some of the other issues that uh, I only briefly touched upon. So please proceed. Thank you for the Global University for this opportunity. Uh, really nice to meet you back, John. Um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, this um, uh, forum is uh, in this month, uh, particularly in uh, the, uh, um, uh, it is in the month that the anniversary for the 10th uh, um, year for us, for the revolution of the 19th of July here in uh, uh, Rojava is happened. It's in the same month. So, so this means a lot for us. Um, I think um, the things that you have mentioned in your uh, previous uh, introduction and the clarifying words that you have uh, uh, said uh, about the situation here is um, giving uh, a nice idea about it. Maybe I will uh, just, um, uh, just make some explanations for some of those uh, that you mentioned before. Uh, of course, um, maybe uh, in the introduction, you have mentioned the federal uh, um, and the administrative uh, system that we are having, uh, which um, till uh, it was in 2018 that the administration have changed its name because of the invasion of Turkey over uh, Afrin. 
and uh, now we are known as the northern and eastern uh, uh, of syria administration uh, self-administration so now maybe the ideas and the principles that we uh, started our revolution uh, on is the same but uh, just the name because of the invasion and the uh, unability to uh, uh, larger out the the project has been uh, stopping us from being the federal um now uh, i i would like to say that um, what we are building on uh, our administration and what we are building on on uh, our revolution is just not started by itself in 2011. Uh, maybe if we go back to 2005 uh, uh, at January, uh, Yekitia Star, which is the, um, the uh, union of uh, Star, uh, the, the, like an organization for women has been known and has been established here in uh, uh, Rojava in Syria. And uh, it was uh, the, like the basic, um, uh, the basic organization for us as women to represent ourselves, to uh, defend our rights and to be. And of course, the, um, uh, the development of uh, uh, Yekitia Star and the development of uh, the movement uh, as women movement and the first women movement ever have been here in Syria for Kurdish women. And uh, it, had, it, it didn't start by itself as well. Um, maybe you mentioned earlier the ideas of Ojalan, and you mentioned the uh, the system uh, the system of uh, the democratic nation, which is uh, contained in the movement of Kajake and the uh, um, the movement of Kurds uh, defending themselves. Uh, let's say for uh, forty five to, to fifty years till now. So uh, these are the basis for us to uh, that we can say that we um, we are now defending ourselves uh, against the invasions of turkeys and the the um, the global system that uh, uh, covers all the all the lands of the world so here in uh, uh, kurdistan maybe um, we had uh, the idea to begin with uh, like a principal idea or the principal uh, sentence that we uh, sensed that we have to do something about it was the uh, uh, sentence of uh, Kurdistan is a big colony and we must free it. So this was the sentence that we, uh, depending on, uh, start our, our revolution in the 1978. Uh, um, and uh, depending on that, the, the revolution has started for us as Kurds. Now, maybe here in Rojava, we didn't have the right to uh, represent ourselves uh, socially or even politically um, freely till the 2011, uh, but the, uh, the seeds of the revolution uh, had begun in 2004, as um, Dr. Mohammed mentioned before. And uh, as I said, the 2005 for Yekitia Star and for the ideas of uh, uh, organizing women, free women, uh, how to live ecologically, how to know your uh, history, as a Kurdish woman, as the woman uh, who lived in Mesopotamia and had uh, the, uh, the flame of uh, culture and of civilization to all the nations around, uh, that started there. Um, you mentioned the, the principles. Well, I have to say that uh, the basic principles that we have uh, working on and still working on, of course, is uh, to build and to build a political and ethical uh, society in a democratic nation is uh, the social economy, the ecological society and the women freedom. Of course, I will uh, come to those and will uh, explain them uh, more a bit for, uh, for everyone here. Uh, maybe I will share uh, my screen with you, just so you can see. Yeah. So uh, you spoke about uh, the commune and the uh, the uh, uh, councils. Will uh, the um, uh, the outlines that you have said about the uh, the communes, of course, uh, it's about the di direct democracy, uh, which we do not see here as the uh, um, just uh, the um, um, the process of just uh, four to five years for uh, for people to go to elect uh, uh, the people that they will represent them, but we see it as a, a whole process that everyone should. 
um, be in it. Uh, so we see every individual, or every habitant in the, our land as a political person who has to decide his uh, or her uh, future and uh, her society's uh, wellness. Uh, of course, uh, this um, uh, direct, direct democracy, direct democracy, um, as we see it, and as we have seen the the experience um, uh, above all the, the nation in the Middle East or uh, in the whole world, was about the commune and councils. Maybe the ideas of the commune and councils uh, wasn't um, a new for the for the humanity. Let's say. Maybe uh, in a lot of uh, places there were uh, communes, maybe in a lot of places they were uh, uh, trying to uh, organize themselves, but it, it is the first time that uh, um, this amount of people are deciding to live along this idea or to uh, just to try to shape their uh, political life according to the commune and councils. So uh, we are uh, saying that the, um, uh, Yes, as we said, uh, this commune and council are leading lives in all aspects, in social, political, and economical um, way. Maybe um, the, the structure of the commune, as you said earlier, is, uh, um, is just based on a lot of committees in every neighbor that, uh, um, in, let's say, in a small town, should have communes that uh, organize the people there. Uh, around 100 uh, uh, houses can make a commune. Those, com those uh, people in those uh, houses can make their commune based on what they are needing. So the basic committees that uh, they will have, the youth committee, which will uh, consider all the issues that the youth at that area is needing and representing. And uh, of course, the one would be uh, in, in that uh, committee would be a young person, not just someone who is bigger than them and telling them what to do. The service committee is uh, um, responsible of uh, giving people the basic needs that they are needing. So uh, they organize the people in, in the area, um, organize the lists of those people, the needs of those people, the amount of the needs of those people, let's say about electricity, water, gas, and etc and whatever they need. And uh, those uh, um, would they give them to the uh, uh, specialized uh, authorities to give it back to the community. The women committee, uh, which uh, is in a lot of places, uh, had uh, a direct um, relationship with the uh, uh, Congress star, which is the Yekitia star, as I mentioned, but uh, changed the name and got bigger. Uh, to be a uh, Congo for all the women uh, around in northern and eastern Syria and in the whole Syria, um, which is uh, uh, always um, uh, trying to, to deal with all the problems that women have, uh, all the issues that women uh, should, uh, should um, uh, let's say, uh, tackle in the, in the society's problem. Uh, and is, it is basic for all, the, um, for all the activities in the society. Of course, uh, depending on this committee, uh, it is an, uh, um, a condition to all the communities and to, to every aspect in uh, like leading and uh, heading the, uh, the uh, administrative and the whole system is the co uh, uh, president for all the, uh, the headings, uh, starting from the commune, uh, going back to the council and uh, heading to the uh, um, self-administration. So in every place, there wouldn't be just one person who is uh, heading the, the whole, um, uh, let's say, department. No, it would be two per people who is uh, the two genders, women and a man. And this, of course, uh, allow the, um, uh, the, uh, the decision to be made uh, by a lot of um, just one perspective, but two perspectives. Uh, of course, uh, there will be committees uh, for those people to just um, to uh, uh, discuss the problem more uh, efficiently and to, to get uh, to the decision, the, the correct decision, and the, um, uh, the one who is depending on all the, the, um, the sites and the views of the uh, committee. So those uh, two uh, persons are just uh, representing the um, representing the will and the, uh, the, the voice of all the committee. Uh, the economic committee or the economy committee is uh, responsible of uh, the economical activity that the neighbor or the commune is uh, having. 
So uh, let's say like um, this, co this uh, commune is needing a cooperative for, uh, for electricity or for a generator. You know, the electricity situation here, here in Syria is very critical and is, uh, is being really essential for everyone to have electricity. But uh, because of the invasion uh, in a lot of uh, places uh, from Turkey, we are not able to get our hours from uh, the electricity. So those communes have generators. Every commune um, gather around and uh, uh, try to to buy or to get a generator. Uh, of course, uh, this this is the the economic committee's uh, um, uh, mission to make sure that everything goes uh, right and to organize that. The health committee also is uh, responsible of for uh, giving. Um, in this situation, for example, now we are uh, in alar alarm alarming. Uh, situation and uh, you know war is in on doors in any hour we do not know so those committees are responsible of uh, giving uh, the community or giving their commune their houses uh, the right instructions and the uh, right uh, um, education for uh, for a medical for medical information to get and to be prepared for every uh, everything can that can happen for the emergencies um, there also are uh, other uh, committees uh, like education and uh, of course we can we can do other committees in other places such as uh, the uh, uh, solving problem committees which had been in a lot of communes uh, the key to not to get these uh, problems to the uh, courts uh, so a lot of problems were solved in the community in the community in those communes by those committees uh, by the elder people who uh, have wise uh, decisions to make who uh, knows uh, their um, their their uh, society better than everyone so those people have uh, managed through those years uh, to uh, just solve thousands of problems uh, in these communities just not to make it go to the court a lot of uh, divorces a lot of uh, problems on lands have been solved there and uh, this was just uh, not by the law, uh, not needing anyone to uh, put anyone in jail and not killing anyone. So this is a very progressing uh, uh, committee that had, uh, that had uh, proven it itself and others as well, in, uh, such as in villages, uh, so people can have um, uh, farming committees or have teaching committees. It depends on how the uh, community needs them. Now, uh, as you showed uh, uh, at the um, uh, at your uh, uh, papers, uh, there were um, other than uh, communes. So the communes um, now at at back at uh, 2016 and 2017, we have we had like around uh, tens of thousands thousands of communes uh, all around the uh, uh, villages, towns, and cities in uh, Rojava. Well, uh, we saw that uh, the large amount of com uh, communes are not just, um, they are a lot of communes, but they are not efficiently working. So uh, we decreased that number into uh, four for each town and uh, one for each village. So we can uh, work and to, to gather the, the, uh, the efforts that the, uh, the community is making to get the right decision better. And this is uh, something that would uh, even uh, um, uh, get in another um, uh, area uh, after the, uh, the new social contract, which I will speak about um, in minutes, uh, because we are uh, seeing that uh, there are flutes in, uh, in the system of communes and we are trying to make it better. And this is one of them, the number of uh, communes and the, the, the missions uh, given to those communes. Mm. Then, as I said, uh, after the the uh, the, uh, the communes are uh, gathering, uh, there are councils for those uh, uh, communes, and the councils are uh, uh, based on um, um, the basic need of those. Uh, um, it had been like that. The basic need of the society, every uh, um, let's say the uh, the health, 
we had a health council uh, on every city. Uh, the economical uh, council, we had an economical council in each city, and uh, etc. So in every uh, commune, we had um, a gathered uh, uh, committees for the, the um, from those communes and a council that uh, present and made out of the of those uh, uh, committees in the um, uh, in the state uh, um, element or level. But now we are we changed that in 2018. It had been uh, one council, and uh, in on this uh, council of the town, there are committees that are uh, made from those people from the communes. They are representing them in uh, the um, uh, the level of the uh, state, on, on the level of the town, and the level of the city. Uh, now. Um, we are managed to uh, put uh, the relationship between the uh, communes and the councils and the administration in a, a level that can um, make the decision even better. So those councils have representatives inside the uh, administration and uh, they can uh, make the decision with us. So you are not just allowed to uh, make the uh, decision by yourself, by like a formal uh, administrative uh, uh, representative. You have to discuss the uh, the um, decision with uh, the council's uh, representatives, and you you have to make it uh, uh, cooperatively with them. Uh, so and uh, the the um, and let me give you an example about that. Uh, if we if we are uh, now deciding the price uh, of the wheat for this year, exam for example, uh, the the council uh, we we have to make um, like uh, a several meetings with one with the farmers, so the the uh, committee of the communes and the farmers in the communes are uh, having their meetings and putting the decision uh, that uh, the suggestions that they have for the, the price of the wheat. Those uh, people around in the communes um, give their decision, all the communes give their uh, um, decision to the uh, council. The council then come to us and um, make another meeting with the unions of the uh, farmers with the um, uh, company that will uh, that we uh, that will buy the uh, um, buy the wheat with the administrative and uh, with us are the um, uh, the administration uh, the department of economics uh, in the the, um, the example of the uh, wheat price and they uh, discuss the decision in an um, scientifically numbers and in the uh, uh, costs and in the uh, the profit that the, the farmer will have and then the decision would be uh, taken to the uh, head of the uh, council, the um, uh, the uh, the administrative, and uh, then the the price will be taken. And in every year, every year, in every aspect of this the the, the society, this can happen. So the community uh, is uh, a part of making the decision of everything that is evolved and uh, is important for them from the wheat price. Uh, from the uh, gas price, uh, from uh, the uh, teaching process, and uh, uh, getting to the uh, new uh, social contract that we are uh, now uh, this, um, uh, discussing, and uh, we are um, in just uh, maybe um, in a very um, short period of time to uh, have our elections on it. This was about the uh, communes. Uh, so as I said, uh, the structure of the communes was as we mentioned before, and um, as I said, the the amount of uh, communes are being just uh, reduced for the the purpose of uh, the mention and the correct mention. Uh, as I said, the direct di democracy for us is by that, by the, those communes and those councils. So you are uh, uh, all the way with the uh, um, with the authorities to take the decision. It's not just voting for uh, every five or, uh, or four or five years. It's uh, just it, by our by our perspectives and by our belief, the democracy is is not just being in the state or to have a state. No, it is in the alternative for the state. That's why we are the self administration, and it is the strength of the community to resist uh, against any oppressive power or uh, to govern itself by itself. 
So even if the self-administration tries to uh, rule the, the community by itself or to um, apply something um, and the society is not willing for that, this is the way that the people can fight back against that. Of course, this is one of the ways that people, people can fight back against that. And this is the more efficient way that we are seeing. Of course, we have Tavdam as well, which is the um, a gathering of the unities and the unions uh, that represent uh, every worker uh, and every activity in the society, uh, which is, uh, as I said, one of them is the union of uh, farmers and uh, the, uh, every other uh, unions that they have, but the, the communes and the council as a structure is the more effective way that we can manage our society and our life uh, about. Um, so uh, if we are uh, speaking about the uh, direct democracy as, as, um, uh, as a structure, of uh, leading the society. We are speaking here about uh, building uh, not just a, a structure that is uh, uh, formal or uh, ju uh, just that uh, it is uh, leading uh, to the political life. No, we are talking about the social life uh, before everything. So we are seeing uh, in the, the modern world or the modern uh, um, states that uh, such as the United States of America, there are there there is um, this this kind of federations as well, and there is this kind of people uh, talking about freedom all the time and talking about democracy democracy all the time. But uh, the people uh, are talking about the individual democracy, uh, the the free uh, willing of me doing whatever I want. But the free willing of a society to do what they want this is for, forbidden for everyone. So we are having now, um, as Kurdish people, and, and for the Kurdish status, uh, uh, we, if we are speaking, uh, the Kurdish uh, have been fighting for their, uh, for, um, for their uh, freedom since ever, we can say, and for the modern life uh, since the 100 year that we are living. And there are a lot of gatherings and a lot of movements in Europe, and uh, uh, where the the where we are saying that the the modern freedom and society is. But they are not not allowed to uh, solve the problem for Kurds. Why? Because of the the individual freedom is just always uh, supported, but the the freedom of societies and free will uh, decision making is not. So you cannot decide your uh, um, your life how to be as as a gathering, and this is what we are uh, trying to do here. We are not just individuals who have the rights for themselves to do, but we are a group of people. We are not just Kurds here in Syria, and the communes and the council does not uh, distinguish people um, among their ethnicals or among their religion or among their gender. We are representing everyone as a, a human being or as a habitant who is living in, in the area and who is um, participating in developing his society. Of course, on the principles that we are uh, allowed to do. So we see the freedom of a person is related and is uh, a very, uh, in, a, in a very strong relationship with the freedom of the society and the, the will and the, the uh, 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 the benefit for the, the society can have and can happen when the benefit for the, the individuals is gathered and is in the right uh, purposes and values. Um, uh, another, another idea about the communes uh, in our society, which uh, the cooperatives is uh, representing or the economical uh, committees for the communes are representing is uh, that the uh, communities or the communes does not have to be in the, the same uh, geographical uh, place. So you, uh, um, maybe us as uh, people who are uh, um, interested in economics or are uh, doing projects in a lot of uh, areas in, in the uh, northern and eastern of Syria, we can, we can have a, a commune that is uh, uh, that the part participants is in uh, other parts uh, or other cities in, uh, uh, in the area. And those people would have projects and those projects can be uh, represented in a cooperative way or in an individual way. 
it's not just cooperatives. And this would also be a commune. Of course, um, this work and uh, this thing that I am saying, maybe it's still on paper uh, in some levels about the, the communes not being in the same uh, geographical uh, place, but in the new contract, uh, this uh, social contract would be uh, something that we can uh, experience and something that we can see. Uh, as I said, um, if we are speaking about the relationship between the uh, uh, communes and the uh, administration, uh, we as the administration or the self-administration see ourselves as the, the former representer for the, the society. But um, uh, we are uh, working head to head with the councils that uh, they will have to, um, uh, to uh, participate in the decision making and in the responsibilities as well. So we are not here just speaking about uh, the community uh, telling orders to the administrative uh, or the administration, not just that, but to the uh, community to be responsible of the um, suggestions or the, the decisions that they are, they are making. We can say that the, uh, uh, the, um, the councils and the communes are the voice of the people. But we can say that Tavdam is uh, uh, what which I said is the uh, unions is the voice of the uh, society's uh, activists and workers, and the the uh, the administration is the formal uh, representer for those people um, um, gathering. If we are talking about the economical system in uh, North and Eastern Syria, and uh, I will uh, now. Um, talk about the cooperatives more in, um, uh, in details. Um, as I said, as the administration is the, the voice and the official um, uh, representer for the people here in North and Eastern Syria, the economical system is also, the economical administration is the official and the formal for uh, uh, making laws, for uh, facilitating the, um, the uh, economical activities here in Northern and Eastern Syria. Of course, every canton um, uh, has the, uh, its departments and its committees for, economic, for economics. And as you uh, previously um, uh, mentioned about the, uh, the whole structure of the Northern and Eastern of Syria, there is a committee, uh, a, center, a central committees uh, for the, uh, the whole Northern and Eastern Syria that uh, gathers all the decisions and makes the strategical decisions for all the uh, the uh, north and eastern administration. Uh, the cooperatives um, have been uh, established at 2016 and uh, uh, still to the 2017. Uh, will uh, which you when you uh, previously uh, got here to uh, Rojava you saw uh, some of those. Uh, we had back then. Uh, um, around 10,000 uh, cooperatives working, which had a lot of areas uh, to cover. Um, in, uh, um, it was farming, it was uh, 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 stock solving, it was um, uh, trading, uh, it was uh, industrial one, and etc. And uh, from all of those uh, cooperatives, uh, maybe the, the main idea of the cooperatives here in, uh, so in, in the North and Eastern Syria, uh, was uh, to people to work by their hands and to gather and make uh, um, projects that can uh, provide a better living for all the, the, the participants in the uh, cooperative. Um, back then we had the uh, um, many, many conditions for people to make uh, um, a cooperative. We had a union for cooperatives, and we had an office for the operative for the cooperatives in every uh, economical department in the cantons. Uh, well, um, we saw that uh, from that uh, perspective, from having a, an office for those uh, uh, cooperatives in every uh, department, uh, in every economical department, well, we had uh, like um, a routinic and a biocratic uh, building for the cooperatives, which uh, just limited uh, the ability of the uh, cooperative to um, just socialize more. And to be uh, to, to serve the the um, uh, the principles that they are fighting for. We had the problem of uh, 
of them uh, being able to, uh, to teach themselves the principles of uh, cooperatives not being just for profit or for maximum profit to happen. Uh, and that uh, lead, led us to uh, minimize an, another time the, uh, the amount of cooperatives. We had the, um, the problem of large uh, uh, scale cooperatives and now the cooperatives are smaller. Maybe one of the most uh, um, uh, successful cooperatives that we had in uh, Northern and Eastern Syria was the women cooperatives and especially the oven uh, of elder women's uh, cooperatives. Uh, since 2017 till today, and this was uh, one of the cooperatives that you visited in Derry, um, it is uh, 19 uh, elder women who are uh, sharing the, um, uh, who are sharing stocks with money first, with uh, the, the work that they have and with the, uh, uh, selling of the, the product that they're having since 2017 till today, that cooperative is still going on. And the number of cooperatives for oven and for making bread for women especially is uh, just, um, it's, it's being larger and larger every day. Um, and it is successful because of the, because the main idea and the basic idea of them feeding them uh, their community and for them serving themselves as um, uh, like um, being uh, independent uh, economically and monetary is just uh, clear and it's just happening in, in front of their eyes. And that was the main idea. Maybe the other cooperatives uh, were uh, trying to maximize the profit and not working by their, by their hands. But we saw from those cooperatives of uh, elder women and their ovens uh, that the, the most successful cooperative should be by working by your hand and uh, to, have, to have sweats on that, in that cooperative, not just waiting for the, the money to come back to you um, in a larger uh, amounts. Uh, so, um, of course, uh, here in the, um, uh, the uh, self-administration of northern and eastern Syria, we are not talking about uh, uh, communist uh, ideas of uh, uh, economics and of living, of just um, trying to avoid uh, everything with, uh, with the, the modern life. No, we are, um, we are encouraging, of course, the personal uh, uh, development. We are encouraging the personal um, uh, investments in a lot of areas. But the conditions of ecological, the con, uh, ecological conditions, the um, uh, uh, social economic conditions, and the, the uh, just uh, being aware that this is the, the basic needs of the, uh, the, the, the society in the time of war. This is what, what just uh, is the, the main frame of all the investments we are letting uh, go on uh, right here. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, several of uh, industrial um, uh, investments or projects here in uh, northern and eastern Syria, and especially in Raqqa uh, region. In Al Jazeera region, we have several of them. Maybe the amount of uh, uh, companies and um, um, uh, projects, uh, industrial projects here are around 600. Um, but all of them are uh, just uh, aware of the ecological uh, dimension of the uh, self-administration. And uh, they are based uh, on the um, uh, agricultural needs more than everything else. Maybe uh, if we had the ability uh, to um, export and import uh, like freely, uh, without having those uh, burdens around us, maybe the, the situation or the economical situation would be better. But because of that, we are just trying to build all the, the, the needed things, not the, the luxurious things. So there had been a lot of investments uh, from outside that uh, had been made from uh, great companies. But uh, the, uh, the main idea was just uh, for people to get uh, the luxury life and not to get the basic needs for them. So you are depending on others uh, on that, and you are not just um, improving your ability to product from yourself, from your own self. So the self-efficiency here is uh, just in, in, in dangerous. But uh, this was the main idea of the economic, not to be like that, and to support uh, those um, projects which uh, will be in the uh, agricultural way and will serve the needs of the people at the first place.
uh, as I mentioned, uh, maybe the uh, the current social uh, contract uh, that we are having uh, is uh, now um, the main idea is that we are, as you mentioned uh, previously in your uh, introduction, it's just uh, refusing the one nation uh, state with the central and uh, uh, with the central um, 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 control of the whole state because that what gives us problem here in Syria. Maybe uh, previous in Syria, as the Dr. Muhammad said, there was the Kurds and the Arabs and uh, Syrians and Chechens and etc. For the the, the nations uh, are around here in Syria, but the name of the the nation was the Syrian uh, uh, Arab Republic. So the only the Arabs were represented or allowed to be represented in the uh, area. So the uh, social contract for the uh, uh, self-administration is not allowing that to happen. And uh, we are focusing on all the nations to be represented and to uh, live together. Of course, uh, uh, the idea of the federal uh, uh, democratic and the federal um, uh, being is, uh, is, is the main key to solve the historical and the social and national problems that the, uh, the nations around here in Syria had. Uh, here in Syria, Syrians and the Kurds, Armenians, Chechens, and the Yazidians do not have any idea about the history that they had in um, um, uh, in their own land in Syria. Because of the, the history books in Syria, is just focused on Arabs and focused about uh, what they had in their history, how the uh, Islamic uh, futuhs uh, in all the areas had been happened and all, uh, all around the um, issues about that, but in the self-administration, we are concentrating on everyone represent themselves in their language, and uh, that's why the um, the the language uh, in the the formal language in the um, self-administration here in uh, uh, northern Asia of Syria is the three languages: the Arabic, the Kurds, and the Syrian. Uh, and that's for uh, that's the, the the main idea of us representing ourselves at as we are, as the culture of the area is. Uh, the, uh, the other idea is the cooperation of all individuals and groups of people are equally uh, with no discrimination in ethical, ethnicity, gender, or religion. As I mentioned previously, um, and in the social contract, this uh, um, contains that everyone is welcomed here by his ethnic, by his gender, and by his religion. We are not um, uh, distinguishing anyone by uh, by that, and we are not distinguishing anyone for any uh, position in the um, in the self administration or in the councils or in the communes. According to that, um, of course, this means that we have equality in duties and in rights uh, between uh, and among all the nations that we are uh, having around here. So being Kurds and being the, the people that um, uh, came up with the idea does not give us the right to uh, give all the duties for the other nations and just us for the, the rights. So we are working hand by hand. We are cooperating in just uh, all the, the, the fields and all the, um, uh, the areas that we had to work in to uh, just uh, succeed our, um, our project. As I mentioned before, the co-presidency, uh, as I... Um, as I talked about it, is an essential for all headings and all the, the uh, committees and all the departments we are having here. Uh, maybe in the new social contract, uh, this had been discussing a lot about uh, why the female should uh, be um, head by head with a male to just uh, uh, run the, the job. Why should I have uh, someone else uh, or someone's uh, ideas to, to just um, maybe sometimes uh, uh, get the job uh, um, get the job done? Maybe the uh, men had the, the um, idea of uh, the delaying of the decision making just because of there's a woman um, beside them. There, uh, for example, um, there were people who were suggesting that uh, let the, the old heads or the all the, the departments, uh, be women if we are uh, feeling that this would uh, give you the right or this would just fulfill the the feel that you are um, now representing yourself 
And of course, that is uh, not accepted. We are not trying to demonstrate over the, 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 the male here in our, uh, our area. We are not trying just to be uh, like one gender or one color here. We are, we are speaking about the, the voice that had been uh, shattered or the voice that had been silenced years and years, decades of years, thousands of years for women. We are now just uh, trying to uh, rule the society or trying to lead our society together. And that's the, the main idea about the co-presidency. Of course, uh, the co-presidency now had, has um, um, a very successful uh, um, area to live in because of uh, uh, men now defending the co-presidency and seeing the benefits of uh, someone else sharing with uh, the idea and um, making the decision with. Uh, the new social contract for the the um, uh, the self administration. Maybe this will um, maybe the media in the uh, past few months uh, have talked about the social um, uh, new social contract and about the meetings that uh, we had. As I as I previously said, in all the communes in every um, in every commune in the uh, so northern and south of uh, northern and uh, eastern of Syria. In every office, in the self-administration, in every council, in every union, in every unity, we have, and in every party, we have meetings. The uh, 300 people who uh, were uh, participant in writing down the draft for the social contract had uh, meetings, had like hundreds of meetings with uh, the, the, the aspects of um, the community to discuss with them to uh, explain the new uh, social contract and to come with the, the decision of um, uh, saying yes for this social contract and uh, uh, correcting it if there's something that they do not feel that it represents them. Of course, uh, in the uh, um, democratic nation as a principle that we have, we believe that uh, if uh, there is nothing just um, should affirmative there is nothing uh, is is always good for us there is always um, um, a change in the, the situation there's always a change in the the mind of the people there is always a change in how we should rule uh, um, our lives uh, because of the the very rapid uh, life that we are having now and because of the 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 global uh, the global um, um, system that the, 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 the whole world is having is just uh, too hard to, uh, to, to combine or too hard to just uh, win against. That's why we are, we are trying to our best to um, just uh, conduct that and to uh, rewrite our social contract that can uh, guarantee us a better uh, way of life. So if uh, there is one uh, phrase that can um, talk about the new social contract, it would be more engagement for of the society in the decision making process. And as we saw that uh, it is um, according to us, uh, we have to make a democratic people council, which uh, with which will just not uh, um, be like a parliament for the people. No, this would be a place that uh, all the councils and all the communes have represented representatives in it, and it will um, uh, it will look for everyone in the department as headings and uh, as you say and ministers, uh, everyone who is uh, uh, elected to be or is his name is uh, put it to be uh, in election to be in a ministry or in a heading in a department or in a, a, a place in a council, everyone should uh, go through this democratic people council and should be discussed uh, uh, so we can say yes about them. So it's not just uh, the election that would, um, uh, that would determine who would lead the, the country if it's a party or if it's uh, a group of people who are um, just specialized. No, they have to be 80% specialized and 20% from those that the, uh, uh, the ethnics, the religions, and the gender is, um, uh, um, is um, just um, elected. 
you know so we have that in the democratic people council and this will of course this this is uh, in discussion and this as the election and the ongo the upcoming election is uh, coming will uh, determine how it will be of course by this we are as i said we saw that the uh, the voice of the people maybe in commune and councils is not just um, effective as, as it as we are wanting it to be and that's why the democratic people council is uh, had been uh, chosen to represent and to more uh, um, give an, uh, a voice for those people to uh, represent themselves this uh, the new social contract uh, of course uh, maybe um, for us living in this um, a period of time for us living the revolution for us living the the rapid changes that we are having maybe there are a lot of um, words a lot of uh, things that we are not um, we are not able to express it well so i would be happy if, if there's anything that i clarify i can clarify or i can give you um, some explanation for dr hassan and laman thank you so much uh for um for the presentations uh there's so much here uh to reflect on um and i'm personally just kind of uh, uh reacting to to the passion uh uh to the mission that you're both uh, reflecting so it's it's truly inspiring and and uh I don't know. It's uh, it's a lot to take in, um, but let's uh, let's start uh, with some reflections from people uh, who have some questions. Um, I have a couple of questions that I would like to pose, but uh, perhaps um, I can start uh, with one question to uh, Dr. Hassan, um, and it's a very basic one, uh, and it has to do with the issue of the war in Ukraine and the trilateral agreement that's uh, that's been written and agreed to by Finland and Sweden. The question I have is this, um, do you believe that um, uh, there is any way that Finland and Sweden uh, will be able to adopt at least a neutral position toward um, the, the Kurdish forces uh, in, in northern eastern Syria. Uh, so at least they will not, um, how should I put this? Uh, that they will not uh, uh, proactively, I would say, uh, uh, become hostile to, to what uh, you're trying to do in northern eastern Syria. Is there room for neutrality there? That's one question. And second, how do you think the United States uh, the posture of the United States will um, evolve now. Do you believe they will continue to remain as allies with um, uh, ANS and uh, act as a buffer against a further invasion and aggression by Turkey? Uh, thank you, John, for this uh, question. Uh, with regard to this trilateral agreement between Turkey, Sweden, and Finland, uh, of course, uh, Turkey uh, managed to pressure Finland and, and Sweden to sign this trilateral agreement, otherwise they wouldn't be able to join NATO. And of course, uh, uh, it is understandable that uh, at the end of the day, uh, Finland and Sweden are, you know, after their own uh, interests, you know, uh, they need uh, uh, this, uh, you know, being members of, of NATO. Uh, so we understand. Uh, that very much, but we would, you know, have hoped that uh, this uh, shouldn't have happened at the expense of the Kurds. For example, for us here to list the YPG, the YPJ, uh, as you know, uh, maybe linked or at, as you know, terror groups. This is something what was difficult for us to to understand because. Uh, the YPG and YPJ both, you know, fought ISIS terrorism, and they were allies to the global coalition against ISIS. So this point in particular, you know, listing the forces that have fought uh, and defeated ISIS and, you know, managed to rid the world from the evil of ISIS and to protect not only north and east of Syria, but the whole world uh, from the threat of terrorism, to put them as uh, at terrorist groups uh, just to appease uh, Erdogan, uh, this is somehow difficult uh, for, for, for us, you know. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, this 
happened. Uh, we don't know the consequences of this uh, agreement, whether it will be implemented and how much, to what extent, because you know, throughout our communication with Sweden and Finland, and we have a representation in Sweden and in Scandinavia, and uh, we exchanged messages and they, they said, uh, we have democratic uh, political systems and we will not uh, apply, you know, some of, uh, you know, literally some of the uh, <laughs> items that we agreed on with Turkey because we have a legal system. We cannot, for example, right. extradite anyone from Sweden uh, unless we have, you know, legal procedures being uh, yeah. in place. So this was the thing, but still we are really, uh, uh, you know, frustrated by, by this uh, agreement. And we uh, do not believe that Finland and Sweden should succumb to the pressure mm -hmm. and to the blackmail of Turkey. They should respect the democratic rules. And uh, even though we understand that uh, politics, you know, uh, is led by and is driven by interests, uh, and at this crucial time, they needed this agreement in order to be able to mm -hmm. join NATO. But uh, at the same time, this shouldn't be at the expense of the democratic values uh, yeah. of those yeah, yeah. Uh, countries. Scandinavia is well known of respecting uh, human rights of uh, these things. So this was, you know, a source of upset, a source of you know, frustration yeah. for us here in North and East of Syria. And as of the second question regarding the yeah. U.S. position, here, whether uh, the U.S. and the global coalition would like to stay or leave, this is up to the U.S. We cannot uh, interfere in, the, in this, you know. We have not mm. asked, actually, the U.S. to come to this region. So a lot of mm. people think that we are counting on the U.S. Uh, or mm. on Russia or on whatever. We are counting on ourselves, on our forces, on our organization, on our political project that we you know think uh, uh, that that we are improving on on a, a daily basis by even uh, making this new social contract we are counting on on ourselves uh, it is up to the to the, to the us to the to the, uh, the the us administration uh, to decide whether to stay or, or leave so we are preparing ourselves uh, on on this basis that at right. the end of the of the day the us could leave but we should be ready uh, uh, for, for, for this decision and depend on, on our own uh, forces. Right, okay, okay. And just one question for you, uh, Lehman. Uh, if you could clarify something, you had mentioned in your presentation uh, a figure of 10,000 co-ops. Uh, uh, I, I, I would be astounded if that were the case. Um, uh, could you clarify, because uh, when I last uh, <laughs> Uh, was looking at this, there was approximately 200. So maybe I'm confused, but could you clarify that, the number of actual co-ops? Um, and secondly, my question is, uh, how well is pluralism working in, 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 uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the political effort of, of uh, Anes? Are people actually participating uh, pluralistically in the various uh, organizations? Because of the, the, the large amount of cooperatives back then and uh, people wanting to, to profit from it because of the, the stock uh, um, um, uh, style of the, the cooperatives that they understood from the trade uh, cooperatives. That's why we had a lot of cooperatives. Every uh, oh. once in a while, people want to do this. And the administrative and the union of the cooperatives were giving money for those to to start their cooperation, but uh, this was uh, this was not getting somewhere good, and this had a lot of flus and a lot of problems, and that's why we have two hundred right now, and that's why we have uh, um, just focused on the the cooperatives that uh, can uh, help the people in need. That is the, the basic thing right now in the cooperative uh, we are uh, heading to. Uh, this is uh, the, the, um, the area that we are uh, sponsoring right now and supporting the, um, the, the people in need in villages uh, for teaching. Uh, for, and the, the, the most important thing, as I said, the, the effort cooperative, that, that you are working in it. You're not just needing money of, uh, or, or making it as a, an investment. Uh, so uh, now we have the cooperatives very much uh, and this is the main idea and the the livestock cooperatives those two ideas uh, for 
for cooperatives are the, the basics right now and uh, the the many uh, uh, or small industrial cooperatives based on the farming uh, and the livestock uh, having so now it's small and as i said the the only one that just managed to to uh, travel from back then to now it's the ovens the elder women ovens and it's uh, flourishing okay. about the okay participation uh, the participation or the participating of the people will i think yeah. when you have a, when you have a, something like that like the cooperatives from being a, in a large a large number of uh, of um, amount of cooperatives and now just uh, declaring maybe we are now uh, seeing that the uh, the the vision or the the site of uh, just uh, participating is lower than before and the people because of the the war situation just not thinking economically to invest more or to just participate in this more and that's why the cooperation uh, uh, union or the cooperative union are now heading towards the the villages uh, in need and teaching them or giving them the the uh, the, the needed situ uh, education just to know more how to how the cooperatives work what do we yeah. need of cooperatives this is social work this is not yeah. just uh, the, the work for investment or the work of uh, for uh, making the the proximate profit uh, out of it so yeah. that's uh, we are seeing uh, people participating in this uh, uh, more oftenly but the focus of uh, for everyone now is on war on how to get ready for war how to do the basic uh, um, 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 needs for them and how to, to just um, minimize the, the, the uh, costs of everything to put it back on work. So no, the, the, of course, the life is not standing. Our project is uh, uh, pursuing, but just the ongoing project. We are not starting anything new right now. And people know that. So uh, okay. that's how we to it. Of course, we need support in a lot of areas in this just to encourage more, but uh, we are trying our best to support ourselves in this. Okay. All right. Thank you, Laman. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, for questions from the field now. Uh, and uh, I think there are some uh, uh, questions that are being posed from some of our Chinese participants. So uh, who's going to manage that? Um, um, our colleagues, Pei Yun, will read out okay. the uh, Chinese questions. Pei Yun, please. Question number one. Against the background of aggression and harassment from Turkey, can the community's production continue? Please say a few words about, your, about the economy in your community. Question number two. The Kurds are scattered in Turkey, Iran. Iraq and Syria, do they have connections with each other and organizational relationship among them? Question number three, what, what kind of land ownership do you have? Does the ownership belong to the communes or belong to the individual? Question number four, how does your community cope with COVID-19 pandemics? Do you have a vaccine? Uh, do you use traditional medicine as the remedy? Number five, how does your financial and banking system operate? Does the communes have debt problems? Question number six, those Kurds who are forcefully displaced due to war, where are they reestablishing their homeland? In what areas are they doing this? Question number seven. What the Kurds in Iran and Iraq, are they doing better or doing worse than those in Syria? Do they have such good cooperatives and communes as the Syrian Kurds have? Question number eight. You propose democratic confederalism and communitarian anarchism. So what's your opinion on communism and socialism? The last one, question number nine. Due to all the uncertainties such as the pandemics, the function or the role of the community 
is gaining more and more attention in China. Based on all the com all the uncertainties in the society, can the Rajavas communities give Chinese societies communities some inspirations and references in terms of community governances? Thank you. Um, can I ask um, uh, Dr. Hassan and Lemon, were you able to um, to hear those questions? For sure, the Kurds in the four parts of Kurdistan, in Turkey, Iraq, uh, Iran, and Syria, uh, we sympathize with each other, we uh, work with each other, we, we have one cause to liberate the Kurdish people from oppression. But um, in terms of, you know, you know, the organization, each country, uh, the Kurds in each country deals with its own affairs and uh, do not interfere in, you know, the uh, affairs of the Kurds in, in other parts of Kurdistan. So we do, of course, share the same cause. We have the same aspirations uh, to get our rights in the four countries. But, uh, you know, uh, and we do, of course, uh, share the same uh, aspirations and, and uh, uh, vision for solving the, the, the Kurdish cause. But, uh, I mean, there is no organizational link between uh, the Kurds in the four parts of Kurdistan. Okay. Uh, um, I'm going to uh, sort of uh, select uh, two or three further questions for, from the list I have. A very interesting question, two key questions around the organization of the economic system. Uh, maybe to you, Lehman, uh, the question was, who owns the land? Uh, and how does the financial system work? Uh, and to what extent uh, is the banking uh, and credit system actually working in, uh, in, uh, in Rojava? So why don't we begin yeah. with the first one? Yeah, who owns the land? <laughs> yeah. Everyone owns the land. Um, yeah, so uh, you see this question is related to the eighth question, I think, about the socialism and the communalism and uh, what yes. is the difference between us and them, the lands. We do not think that uh, the governments should or the, the, uh, the authorization should own all the lands. No, there are lands that uh, have been previously uh, um, the, the, the Syrian government had uh, put uh, uh, its hands on it. Uh, we have those uh, kind of lands. We have the um, individual owned lands. Uh, so we have that as well. Um, the, the, uh, it's not just uh, one kind of lands. The, you see about land owning, uh, the, the Syrian government had a lot of tricks to do and they have just uh, uh, put the, the hands on lands and the landed the uh, outlands and just it's it's something that uh, had been um, uh, put it with the political uh, situation so when uh, when they uh, when they build up uh, uh, like bands in uh, in some areas in uh, uh, in syria they move the people and they give lands uh, for those arab peoples which uh, in here in in al jazeera so it was in a region and now they are living in another region and it was 70s and or 60s now we are having problems with the the, the original owners for those land who are kurds and those people uh, are uh, people in uh, Tabqa in raqqa they are now uh, living in this land as it is uh, there and they uh, they just sold that land to uh, someone and that someone sold it to another one and now we are having this problem and terrible, this is terrible, one terrible. of the with land yeah, yeah. Owner, ownership, yeah, but uh, for the the question, I am understanding that no, we don't uh, own the lands of all the people. The farmers, uh, there are a lot of farmers that they have their own lands. They are uh, um, uh, farming in it, and uh, we are helping them, helping them with uh, seeds, with um, with everything they are needing, gas, with petrol, and with etc. To uh, example, for example, for the strategic um, uh, corn uh, corpse. Uh, such as wheat, such as corn, and uh, uh, etc. for the, the livestock. So we are supporting that, the, the, uh, the land ship and the, the farming. And for the others, uh, the, the, um, the lands that the, the Syrian government had put uh, uh, its hands on it, 
we are giving those as corporations so we are saying for every who needs uh, to uh, farm a land or who wants to invest in the land, uh, you can come and uh, you can have a contract for uh, farming in that or to use that land in agricultural way for two years. And uh, of course, the, the contract had conditions and such, and uh, you can do that. So um, some of the lands, the, the uh, uh, self-administration is uh, just... Um, 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 landing them or farming at them and uh, um, using for agricultural purposes and others uh, they are giving to people back to people to uh, invest in it for okay. the financial and banking um, situation well uh, we are having problem in that and uh, Maybe in whole Syria, the, the banking and the financial system is uh, uh, had been uh, recent or new uh, at the uh, twenty uh, the two thousands uh, or the the uh, new century. Um, just uh, this was developing really slowly. But in uh, northern and eastern Syria, there uh, are no official banks that they, uh, that we can manage the and monetary uh, according to it. Uh, there is a, a problem in that. And uh, we are working on that. Maybe in this, um, the new uh, contract, social contract, had uh, something to do with that. Uh, it's uh, like a payment office that would be made uh, to um, just uh, solve a bit this problem. We are uh, now coordinating with the uh, uh, organizations and um, we are trying to just solve this. But uh, it it does need uh, something uh, something official. That does yeah. need something because you are talking about uh, the uh, WFO, you are talking about the the, uh, the federal system, you are talking about something in uh, the uh, the state level, not just uh, a self administration. So this is again political, and it is just not uh, that uh, bias which you can uh, deal with it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got uh, uh, the first question for you, Dr. Hassan. Uh, it says um, from the Chinese audience question came, um, uh, the region is under attack uh, and uh, from Turkey. How can it uh, continue with a kind of community uh, development and production? Uh, what kind of community production uh, is, is, is underway? That's a very kind of general question, but I guess the issue is with that degree of uh, constant sort of war footing, so to speak, and the threat of uh, continual invasion and aggression from Turkey, um, how uh, how possible is it for the kind of community and economic and social development to actually uh, flourish in, in Rojava? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have a lot of economic challenges uh, in, in Rojava, especially we are under embargo, you know. Yeah. Uh, we have only one border crossing with the KRG, with the Kurdistan regional government, and this border crossing, crossing is not open, unfortunately, all the time. We have some problems in this respect as well. So uh, economically, we, we are really suffering and uh, we are facing a lot of challenges. And with the Turkish threats, this, uh, you know, aggravates even the uh, economic uh, problems. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, uh, our region is an agricultural region. We are uh, uh, doing uh, our best uh, in order to achieve a kind of self-sufficiency for our people. Um, it's, it's difficult. Uh, but I mean, uh, we, we, we can do nothing uh, to change yeah. uh, this, this situation. Uh, I'm going to follow up with another question that I had, which is, uh, you mentioned the border crossing uh, with uh, the KRG and the tensions that have been there for a long time between uh, the Kurdish administration in Iraq uh, and, and uh, with uh, in Rojava. Um, my question is, uh, and it's the political tensions within the Kurdish community, uh, both in Rojava and outside Rojava. Um, could you summarize in a way um, how these divisions are actually playing out and uh, to what extent are you coming close to a resolution or at least some kind of a, 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 a compromise or some kind of a, a accommodation of the different political positions of different 
factions or uh, interests within the Kurdish community? Yeah, unfortunately, a uh, long time ago, we, we have had this uh, yeah. political division among the Kurdish uh, movements, you know, and mainly, of course, uh, bet between us here, the autonomous administration and the parties that are uh, affiliated with the uh, autonomous administration, with the PYD and with, with the uh, KRG and the uh, Kurdistan Democratic Party uh, in particular. Uh, so, uh, yes, I mean, since the Kurds are occupied by, you know, four countries and, uh, uh, of course, you know, uh, those colonial countries are using the Kurds against each other uh, in order to undermine any progress, any gain for, for the Kurds, you know. Uh, so, unfortunately, this happens and, uh, you know, we should... Uh, work to improve relations with uh, with all the uh, Kurdish parties because at the end of the day we cannot survive as Kurds unless unless we have a unified you know uh, uh, front. But these divisions e exist uh, uh, and uh, until now you know we we can uh, uh, do nothing to change uh, this fact. We are of course uh, in in constant dialogue with the KRG with the uh, also KDP regarding the border crossing and regarding the other unresolved issues. Uh, we have made some progress, but still, of course, we have long way to go uh, in order to settle uh, the disagreement uh, points uh, and uh, to be able at least to normalize the, the situation. Yeah, and uh, for the inclusion of these uh, different uh, Kurdish political uh, parties within the, K, uh, the Kurdish Democratic Council, for example. Uh, I know there's been ongoing <laughs> uh, negotiations yeah. and discussions to try and uh, uh, construct, you know, uh, an agreement or a solution. Uh, where is this process at at the moment? At the moment, uh, uh, it is like in a state of stalemate, you know, uh, yeah. still... Uh, there is not real progress and uh, maybe this is because of the pressure of Turkey on the uh, KNC, on the Kurdish National Council as well. Mm. Uh, so unfortunately until now we have not been able to uh, resolve this issue and uh, uh, still we are in, in, in the same uh, position as, Situation. as before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And just for the audience, just to clarify that the, uh, the Kurdish Democratic Council was the entity that was created to try and unify the various Kurdish uh, 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 constituencies uh, within uh, Northeast Syria into some kind of a political accommodation, uh, but that still remains unresolved. Uh, no, no, uh, this is, there's a difference between the Syrian Democratic Council, which is an yes. umbrella for political parties and organizations, yes. Yes. Uh, for the Syrian uh, uh, parties and uh, right. the KNC, the Kurdish National yeah. Council, which is yeah. a group of political parties that are affiliated with the uh, Kurdistan Democratic Part Party, which is led by uh, uh, the Mr. Barzani. Uh, exactly. So, yes. uh, so the the discussion has been between the uh, PYNK, you know, this uh, uh, group of political parties that are. Uh, together with the PYD participating in the autonomous administration here, and the political parties that are affiliated with uh, the Kurdistan Democratic Party and the KRG. This, uh, you know, has been uh, the, the discussion between the two sides, and until now, this has not been uh, yes. uh, resolved. Yes. yes, yes, okay. Um, so, uh, a very interesting question came up, uh, which is, uh, what are your, uh, the opinion uh, your reflections on the subject on communism. Uh, we have been describing basically a system of kind of libertarian, communitarian uh, uh, socialism in a way, uh, which is uh, a very different uh, political theory and practice than communism. Uh, so I would like to get both of your opinions on this. Uh, Lima, maybe you do, can you reflect on how both the administration uh, and people uh, that are involved politically in northern and eastern Syria view communism as a as a system. 
Uh, so, um, yes, this was maybe, uh, as I said, the, the land the owning ship was, was one of the, the, the ways that uh, the uh, uh, socialism has dealt with, um, with the, the everything owned by the government or everything is owned by a central uh, control uh, system. Uh, this is the biggest difference between uh, uh, us uh, as uh, the, uh, the democratic uh, nation uh, system or idea. Uh, and the, the socialism, because we are not uh, saying or are not seeing that uh, a control system or a control centralized system is the idea of solvation or of, uh, of um, dealing with the problems that the world has. The second important uh, difference between us and the socialism or the uh, communism is the idea of the state itself. So uh, maybe in, in reading about uh, Marx, uh, Marx and uh, leading the, the uh, reading the um, um, the books of uh, socialism, you can see that they are uh, uh, talking about the state and uh, they are saying how dark it is. But they are uh, reflecting uh, reflecting again to Lenin as the the, the lead of for for the uh, uh, revolution, and then he become uh, the head of the state. And then you know what happened with uh, with uh, socialism and the the uh, totalization that we we are seeing after that. So we are seeing that the the state itself, as a, a system or as a, a construction uh, from above uh, five uh, now five hundred uh, um, after BC or uh, let's say seven hundred uh, uh, BC, we are seeing that uh, this uh, kind of controlling people of uh, um, uh, primatic uh, way of controlling and the systematic way of uh, leveling people into uh, military, into people who are uh, uh, gods over uh, the heads of others and into the common people who are just working um, for, for, those, for those two. Uh, just to worship them and to, to be afraid of them. We are talking about a level in the, the uh, democratic nation that we are all the same. We are living together. We are equal. There are no slaves for, for others to just get richer. There are no women who are um, uh, under the control of the God of the house who is the, the husband. There are no child who is just uh, in order to do what the parents is telling just because they are the parenting them. We are uh, um, talking about um, a, so a society that is discussing the problems, that is living freely in, in the ideas, not just controlled, controlled by others. This is the, 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 uh, the basic idea of the, the, the uh, democratic uh, nation that we are talking about. This is the difference between us and the socialism. We are not seeking to just uh, everyone uh, look alike like each other. You know, when socialism had came, you have a form for the, the, uh, for the soldier. You have the form of uh, an individual. We are all have to look the same, the same haircut, the same uh, outfit, the same word that is coming out of our mouths. But we are not seeking for that. We are saying that the culture and the the uh, um, richness of every nation or e every individual have to come out. You are allowed to uh, to freely speak about your ideas, and you are allowed to just be yourself, because the globalization has used this idea. To put everyone in this, in, in the, the uh, we are all in a, a small village that we can all speak English and we are all can be rich out of, uh, of others. It's the same idea, but we are not seeking for that. We are saying that Kurds people have their culture, have their civilization, and they should represent that. They should speak their language. You, you do not have to speak Arabic. You have to speak Arabic when, when, when the other is not speaking your, your language and you have to communicate, but you do not have to speak it as in your home with your child and to, to think about it. You have your own characteristic. You have your own uh, pers person. You, are, you have your own um, things that you, you can express. And the same for nation, the same for parties, the same for, for every aspect in life. You are free to, to represent yourself. You don't have to be anyone else. And this is uh, the main idea of us um, living uh, freely. And the, the other uh, thing um, I think is the, the freedom of women. 
maybe in uh, socialism, uh, when they talked about women, when uh, women fought against the, the men in, in um, to getting the revolution done, there were uh, always uh, speaking that the woman is uh, a very powerful thing, that uh, she has to be represented. But after the revolution, we did not see women uh, ruling or we did not see women represented by its free will. No, we saw that the depression, that the, the uh, um, uh, unrights had uh, carried on and continued. The, the felonies for, for women, the, the misuse of the, the women, the misuse of the body of the women continued and nothing happened. We and the, the nation, a democratic nation, sees that the freedom of women is the key for the freedom of the whole society. And that is a main principle that we believe in. We do not look at, um, at women or at the, the uh, uh, aggressive action against women as just a gender. We are looking at it as the, the, a person being demonstrated, a demonstrative and another is demonstrated by it. And this is the idea of freeing everyone in the, in the, in the society and to just um, uh, build up your society according to that, to this democratic uh, way of living and of uh, evolving in your society. Just in a few words, I want to say, maybe Dr. Muhammad has. <laughs> yes, I would like to ask also you, Dr. Muhammad, uh, your reflections on this, but you can add to this. Yeah, I mean, for me, of course, uh, communism is a political and philosophical uh, concept uh, and uh, the trend. Uh, every nation, of course, has the right or every people have the right to adopt the uh, ideology that they think is best, you know, uh, serve the interests of, of uh, its own people. Uh, so from this perspective, uh, I, I view, you know, communism, but I have no uh, political opinion on, on, on communism. And uh, of course, we, we cannot judge uh, uh, mm. communism or any other philosophy, philosophical uh, ideology uh, because every nation has the right to believe uh, and to uh, embrace what uh, they think uh, it, serve, uh, it serves, you know, the interest of that uh, nation. Right. Well, this leads then, uh, really, I, I will pose this as, as uh, the final question. Um, uh, and it's uh, whether the model of communitarian sort of uh, self-administration and direct democracy that Rojava has been ex experimenting with can be a model for communities in China. Uh, I mean, uh, China, of course, is... Uh, um, uh, at least one form of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a communist model. It's evolved radically over the years. It has nothing uh, much uh, uh, to do with you know, the early years of communism and Maoism in China, but uh, it is still a one party system. It is still a, um, a centralized uh, form of state control over so many aspects of both political and economic life. Is there space? within a system like that in China for something like uh, localized communitarian democracy uh, to function, do you believe? I'll add, for both of you, I'll ask that question. Um, why don't you reflect on that for us, Dr. Hassan, see what, yeah. what you have to say about that. Well, as, as I maybe uh, said in my previous answer, uh, it's up to uh, any country to decide on any political or philosophical ideology to, to adopt. And our model of governance uh, here, whether it could be used you know, in other countries, uh, it's, it, it depends on the situation of every country. You, know, you cannot apply uh, a certain model of governance as it is in other countries. You, know. you need to take into consideration the uh, the differences. So whether it can be applied in China or elsewhere, uh, maybe the, the Chinese people, the Chinese government uh, can, can best know whether this could be uh, uh, implemented as, as a model. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, each country has its own characteristics, has, has its own uh, conflicts and, and problems. 
uh, we believe that, of course, uh, this uh, model of governance, which is based on plurality, on respecting others, multi-ethnic, multicultural uh, uh, project uh, that gives, uh, you know, the chance to everybody to participate. Uh, uh, this is a good model and it could be, uh, uh, you know, used uh, and, uh, as a model for solving at least the, the uh, sectarian and ethnic conflicts, uh, for example, in the Middle East. Uh, because most of the Middle Eastern uh, countries are either nationalist or theocratic uh, political systems. So this model, which is, uh, you know, uh, different and uh, adopts uh, a different ideology uh, based on, you know, uh, in involving or including uh, the diverse communities in the decision making process based on respecting women, uh, environmental sustainability, these kind of core principles could be an answer for the uh, crises in, in the Middle East mm. and, and elsewhere. But mm. whether, I mean, uh, uh, this exact model uh, can uh, be used or whether we can make some modifications or, or whether maybe uh, uh, other nations could find other models, it's up to uh, to other countries to decide uh, on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll give you the final word on this, Lehman. Um, uh, whether this could be a model for you know communities in China, but the point that you touched upon, uh, Dr. Hassan, was uh, how important the model is for addressing sectarian issues of polarization and difference. Uh, and particularly within the Middle East, which, as you rightly described, is divided on theocratic lines on the one hand or autocratic lines on the other, uh, autocratic nationalistic lines on the other. So, Lemon, uh, what is your take on this? To what extent do you think that Rojava's model uh, has a role to play uh, for other communities, both in the Middle East and in China? Well, uh, maybe if we are talking about the... Um... The experiences of the, the the whole world in every revolution for every person who is trying to live better who is uh, uh, um, defending uh, his being against just unfairness and against uh, the injusticeness and such we are seeing revol uh, the revolution of Russia, one of those we are seeing it as the newest model of the of the uh, modern uh, person to just uh, express themselves or to defend themselves against it. Maybe uh, the Kurdish people, as this model, uh, are the the last two or the last model that we we have uh, um, came up with. And uh, but maybe um, when we are talking about uh, socialism or communists, we are not saying that they are evil or that they are bad. But just we are saying about the differences. I think the the communists or the uh, socialists has a lot of uh, common uh, areas to share with the the uh, um, democratic nation uh, principles and the democratic nation system. I think uh, it's not impossible for them to to take this model to China. Maybe as Dr. Muhammad mentioned, yes, uh, of course, every nation had uh, has its uh, abilities, has its characteristics. So you cannot apply something uh, just uh, in that frame uh, on another uh, nation but uh, the principles for the nation a democratic nation is one for all the humanity it's uh, seeking the humanity it's seeking the uh, um uh, the uh, how to save the earth from the the uh, the industrial um uh, ruinous that we are having it's uh, seeking the equality in and justice in uh, uh, treating all uh, um the uh, creatures or the inhabitants in everywhere so i think it is possible for china to have this model i think maybe Maybe um, uh, taking this and studying this and trying it on another society would uh, have to, uh, first of all, uh, communicate with the, the society that had this experience. Maybe uh, visiting, coming, and uh, just um, discussing such in this forum, such in another uh, experiences, and maybe in land experiences will ha help to 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 adjust on it and to see how how it is uh, comfortable for the Chinese people to have. And another thing, I think that 
um, the most important thing for nation to change is the, the, the will of this nation to have change, to see that we are having a problem and we should solve this problem. Because uh, the, the Kurds, when, when they try to, when, when they reach the, the idea of we are not being able to be us, was the, 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 the main key to, for our revolution to come or to, to happen. So uh, it was described like uh, the, um, uh, the Kurd uh, nation is like a dried tree who would ever um, make it li live again or make it alive again. So if the, the Chinese minds or the Chinese um, uh, uh, good inhabitants that uh, are thinking and, uh, and trying to make their uh, society better, I think uh, then the democratic nation uh, system and principles are one of the best ways to make that happen. Maybe it's early for us to speak about the, the, the Middle East because this is one of our um, uh, goals or our main goals to, to speak about. And maybe it's the confederalism that we are speaking in the, the, the democratic nations uh, principles, uh, speaking about the other uh, kind of uh, nations and other uh, part of words, but world, but uh, it is possible. And I'm very optimistic about that because uh, the hunger of freedom, the hunger of justice is all the place, is everywhere in the world. So, and this is uh, some uh, solution for it. And I think it's one of the best solutions for it to happen. Well, I think we'll uh, close on those comments. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lehman and uh, Dr. Mohammed, for taking part in this uh, discussion. Um, I hope it generates, uh, you know, further interest uh, on the part of all uh, the participants in the webinar. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, the, uh, the Global University, Lingnan University, and Kinchi and Jade, and helping put all of this together. Um, it's been a real pleasure, uh, and it's been a real honor for you know just playing a little bit of a role in helping put this together. So thank you all uh, for taking part uh, in this.